Here we are. Okay. Um, okay, so I believe we're about three quarters. If, if uh, someone can correct me, I believe we're about three quarters of the way down uh, 62B. And we're at... One second. Uh, trying to think where to start from where to start from here. Um, okay, I'm going to start from one second. That halfway down the page, um, first one line is area. So it's Ella Omar Abaya. Another explanation. Another explanation for Abaya. Okay. Okay. So basically, uh, <clears throat> okay. So we're trying to explain the second half of the Mishnah. The the Mishnah says the guy is selling somebody. Um, he lends he lends the guy money. The guy but he he lends the guy flour in the Mishnah. Second. Uh, let me know this. Yeah. So basically he buy he, he he buys wheat from him at a set price, and then he wants to convert the wheat into wine. And he doesn't have the wine. So he's, again, he starts with he lends the guy wheat, or maybe he buys wheat, then he wants to convert the payment instead of wheat, he wants to get them get it in wine, and the guy doesn't have wine. Okay, and like we said, I'm going to presume that everyone here is familiar with saw. Saw, you can't loan a commodity because you may be paying back more value than you're actually borrowing. There's an exception, an exception to that called yeshle, which is if you already have some of some of that commodity. So El Amar Abayah, so Abayah says, Masnisan Kidatani, we're on 62B, a little bit more than half, halfway down the page, and we're at, the first one line is Masnisan. Masnisan Kidatani, or Safra, the Beribis to Berabchia. The Mishnah could be explained with the concept of Beribis introduced by Rabchia. What is this idea, Beribis of Rabchia? The interest of Rabchia, the tenor of Safra, Beribis to Berabchia. Yesh Varen Shehem Utaran, Vasurim Neharomas Ribis. There are certain things that are permitted, but they're prohibited because they look like ribbis. Okay, it's not, how is that? How does that happen? A guy says, I'd like to borrow $100. I don't have $100, but I have $100 worth of grain. I'll give it to you as a $100 loan. Okay, so it's an interesting thing. So basically, the guy, the guy buys the wheat for $100. I'm sorry, the guy loans the wheat as a hundred dollar loan. And then the uh the lender buys back the same hundred dollar wheat for ninety-eight dollars. Effectively, this is a way of sort of getting interest, right? Not technically speaking, interest, because the sale is is a two percent undervaluation, right? You're buying, you're, you're giving the, the borrower is giving the lender a two percent discount. And the loan is going to be paid back as a hundred dollar loan, but it does look like ribbis. It looks like interest because the guy loans his friend a hundred dollars, and he net gains at the end of the day two dollars. Looks like it's interest. Okay, but to be more precise, it's actually ninety. It's actually ninety six is is what he paid for. Is what he's offering to buy the what the lender is offering to buy the wheat off the borrower for. for. The Eastern Barber sell 24 coins. Again, it's 25 coins to 100. So 24 coins is 96. Okay, one second. But also, last came there, Roman service. It's prohibited to do this because it looks like interest. So, Hachanami, in our mission as well, what's the scenario? He says his friend would like to borrow 30 coins. Amr Lais, he says his friend says, I don't have 30 coins. He says his friend says, I don't have 30 coins. But I do have wheat worth 30 coins. Shani nice and I'll give it to you. Nasan lachit and bishlesh and dinarum. The chaz of lachim and the dinner is off. Okay. So now what happens? He lends his friend the wheat that was loaned, was loaned as a 30 coin loan. 
And what he wants to do now is buy it back for a gold coin, meaning he's buying it back for 25 coins. So gold coin is 25 silver coins. So we're talking about 30 coins here. What's happening is the lender is giving the borrower a $30 loan grain. The borrower takes it back takes it back for 25 coins or one, one gold coin. Okay. Okay. And and he does it in he does it in wine. So So he's buying Okay, so now what's happening is, okay, now what's happening is as follows. So he, so he's, he's, he's uh, buying back the wheat for twenty five coins, five less. Now, if he was buying back the wheat in value of wine, so now because he has the wine, he loaned him grain. He's getting back wine. So the fact that the wine is valued slightly differently. Is, is is irrelevant, even though it's, it's, it's sort of a net value gain that doesn't look like ribis. What does look like ribis is when he doesn't have the wine and he and and now it's a lo- now he's repaying him in money. So in other words, the guy loaned him thirty dollars worth of grain. Now he he's repaying. He wants that the thirty dollars of grain should get him. He, he's buying the thirty five the thirty dollars of grain for twenty five units of wine, twenty five dollars worth of wine. So if the guy has the wine to deliver. Now we look at it as sort of he loaned grain, he gave back wine, and uh, it doesn't look it doesn't look like Rivis. But if he pays back money, he doesn't have wine, so he's accepting a debt obligation of money. So then it looks like Rivis because the value here is different. One second. Okay. Uh, okay. So now if he values the wine, so, so now what's going to happen is. The grain that he loaned, he's taking as a twenty-five dollar value. So he, the 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 uh, the lender now is gaining five dollars. The the borrower now has to increase another five dollars worth of wine, which is not a problem. Because why? Because I loaned you thirty dollars. I just gave it to you in grain, and now I'm getting back thirty dollars, and I'm just getting it in wine. That's fine. No no problem with ribbons here. What is problematic is that if he doesn't have wine. So then what we're saying is that the $30 of grain that you gave, actually you get back that exact amount of grain plus another $5 worth of grain. So it does look like ribbis because you're adding on, you're getting more grain or, than, than you received, than, 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 than you loaned. The lender gets back more grain than he loaned to the borrower. The loy came in the last second, revived the Mishra, Susan Minay, Mexican ribbis looks like ribbis. Amar Lay Ravas, Ravas says, Ravas does not like this explanation. Ihaki, Tenli, Hiti, Demay, Hiti, Mibarlai. The guy shouldn't be asking for the wheat. He should be asking for the value of the wheat. So the says, you're right. The guy says that I'm selling that. I've already sold to you. So the says, that I've already sold to you. Um, so page edition, please, Rabbi. Uh, six lines on the bottom of the page. 62B. The wheat should be for 30 coins. So the Gemara says, Originally, he agreed that the wheat would be worth 30 coins as well. What the mission means to say is that originally we valued it at 30. Now I want that value of 30 to be on wine, which actually is more grain than I originally loaned. He loaned him $30 of grain. Now that $30 of grain decreased in value to 25. So he says, I want the $30 of value 
value that I've originally loaned to you, I want that to be in Y, which would mean the original value of grain for 25 plus another $5 in, in Y. Okay, so the Mars is Abedina is Zav Hakor, the Kena Sharkatani. Now, the problem is the mission implies that when he loaned the money, the the uh, the loan was was that that unit of grain was worth twenty five, not thirty. So therefore, in in our, in our explanation, the original value is thirty, then it's decreased in value. But the mission doesn't doesn't seem to imply that way. So Rava says, uh, "When I die, Rav is going to come out and greet me in heaven." Because I explained this mission using Rav Aisha. So the next explanation of the mission, the Tani Rav Aisha. Rav Aisha explained, So what happens? A guy borrows $100. And he goes to his friend and he says, I'd like the money. His friend says, okay, here's the deal. I'll pay you in wheat. They said, okay, we're going to give you 10 units of grain for 100 bucks. That's the current value. The current mar- market value. So he is Manchit and Limkar. Fine. The, the, maybe the price of wheat went up. Maybe the guy wants to get rid of the wheat. He wants to sell the wheat. So I'm like 10 Lechit and Shani writes to the The guy says, give me the wheat. I want to sell it now and get my money. Get my money back. But we can find Yayin to buy wine. I'm like, the guy says, well, guess what? I have wine. Yayin, yes, the Yayin, Shani writes to Save us on like a Shashal Afshav. Uh, they basically made an agreement to transfer the value of the wheat to, to wine now. So he's going to pay back the $100 instead. Originally paid him back in wheat. Now he's paying him back in wine. He's taking the wheat and converting it into wine at the current market rate. So sure enough, he gives on the iron limb card. Time came to sell the wine. I want to sell the wine and buy oil. Save us all like a shar He says, look, he says, I got oil too. Uh, let's make a deal. That wine that you have by me, I'm going to con- we'll convert it into oil. Okay. Kulam um, in all these scenarios, in Yeshle Mutter, Enle Oser. If you have the, so if the guy has the wine, he has the oil, then it's permitted. If he doesn't have the wine and doesn't have the oil, it is not permitted. Again, this is because it looks like, it, it looks like he's loaning commodities. Okay, one second. Okay. Well, my look, when the mission says he bought, what does that mean? Look, meaning that he, when the mission says he bought, he bought wheat, it doesn't actually mean he bought the wheat. It means he accepted the wheat as a, re, as a repayment of his $100 loan. Okay, and that's why in the mission, same story, right? The mission is a case where the guy's converting. He borrows $100, converts it into grain. Then he wants to convert it into wine. So as the Mishnah, if you have the wine, it's okay. If you don't have the wine, and like this looks like a commodity loan, and therefore it's prohibited under the law under the rabbinical laws of Rabbis. Okay, one second. Omarovo. About a third of the way down on 63A. The first one line is Mina. Omarova Shmamina. We see from here, Midoraisha, from this statement of Ravasha, class. We find three things. You're allowed to repay a loan with, with commodities, with grain. And we don't say, look, what did you borrow? You borrowed money? You got to pay back money. It's not a requirement. If you loaned, even if you loan money, you still can get repaid in grain. That's the first thing. The condition to be able to repay a commodity, it, it is required that you have the commodity in your possession. Okay, and third, we support the opinion of Rabiana. To all Rabiana, like Rabiana explained, Mali Hain, Mali Dmeyan. There's no difference between them or their value. Meaning, if I loaned $100, you can either pay me with $100 or you can pay me with anything worth $100. It, in other words, the idea of Mali Hain, Mali, the idea of Mali Hain, Mali Dmeyan sort of underpins the concept of Yeshla. Let's, let's, let's explain this again. We, we, uh, we spoke about how Yeshle avoids the commodity problem. Again, the commodity problem here is because you borrow $100 worth of commodity, the loan, and you have to pay back. If you pay back an equal amount of commodity, that might be more or less value. The idea of Yeshle is, look, well, um, I, so I'm lending, lending you $100, and, and I don't have $100, so I give you grain instead. 
Um, hold on a second. Let's just get a get a good scenario here. Give me a second. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I'm loan. I loan you. I loan you a hundred dollars worth of commodity. If you're able to repay me immediately, then, then, so to speak, there's no. Um, hold on one second. Let me hear it. One second. Let's give an example. Give me a second. I'm sorry, Rabiana would best be understood when you're trying to convert, so you're trying to repay a loan with another commodity. So according to Rabiana, Rabiana is like, look, uh, you could take the commodity or you could sell the commodity immediately and you'll get the same amount of money for your loan. So you can, you, you're, you're allowed to repay a loan with a commodity because there's no difference between the loan and the item. And additionally, therefore, you could constantly convert the repayment. So first you convert it in, into into wheat, into grain, and then you convert it into wine, and then then into oil. Because at every stage you're always able to sell the commodity and take take the monetary value of the commodity, uh, you know, at, when it's repaid. Okay, Fumara says Mason, Kulam Yeshle Mutter. You say Mason, Rabbi. Yes, he said, Mace is first one on the line. Yes, I must have. I must. Oh, I see it. There it is. Big gully. One second. Hold on. One second. One second. Sorry, I skipped a few lines. So. Hold on. Hold on. I'm sorry, I skipped a few lines. Go back, go, go, go back three lines at the top of the maze. Okay, I, I, I skipped a few lines, so that makes sense. Okay, Shah made to run. Oh, Rabbi Mali Hamal is man. Okay, first one line is Mali Hain. The eighth one we launch. Rav Amar Rav says, Eisen Amana be Paris, the ain Eisen Amana be Dalman. You can, okay, this means you can, uh, one second. Okay. A person can make an agreement to buy wheat today, even though the price of wheat may, may increase. So he may be getting more value at a later point in time, for, you know, a, a, a futures contract. The Anais Namana Bedomen. This is this is sort of to okay. This is a way to convert that money, that, that value, back into money. So the first scenario, he's buying, uh, he's buying grain at a future point, which the grain, when it's delivered, might be worth more than he paid for it. Over here, he's buying grain at a future point to be sold and given back to him as money. So he's taking he's he's taking the profits and the increase in value. Okay. Um, and and uh, and th this is this is prohibited. Raviani um, Raviani says Mali hey Mali's ma'am. Raviani argues that doesn't really make a difference um, because right now he could buy. Right now he's buying the grain. He could buy the grain. The guy has the grain to deliver to him. Yeah. So it's no different than buying the grain and actually holding on to it, or telling the other guy to hold on to it and sell it when he when he had when it increases in value and take the profits. So Raviane basically is, is arguing that if the guy has the stuff to deliver immediately, then you can make such an arrangement, buy it now and keep it on credit until, uh, until the, the time comes where they're worth more than they are now, and then you'll sell it and take back the money. There's no problem with Rabis because the guy has the materials. And the Gemara points out, Mesve, Kulam Yeshle Mutter. The Rice of Ravaisha clearly says the same thing. If the guy has the grain in stock, then you're allowed to. You know, it's it's like it's like selling a future on gold that you have in the vault in, in either comics or in, in London. Um, a guy keeps his if a guy owns owns uh, the, the gold, you know, in one of these certified vaults, you're able to write a future future contract against the gold. So uh, Riviana is saying, look, if you can deliver the gold today, then you can also deliver it in a few months. So you could also agree. But the guy's buying the gold today and he'll sell it in a few months when it's worth more and he'll give him back the money. 
And Rav Oisha seems to say the same thing. So Rav Huna Amarav So so Rav Huna says, no, no, there's a difference there. The difference is, did you actually acquire the golden vault? If you actually did Meshich on it, you, you literally, you physically picked it up. So then it's yours. If it's yours, then you're holding it on for a couple of months. The, the, the fact the other guy happens to be helping you out is irrelevant. There's no ribbis here. I actually bought it. In other words, if I didn't actually buy it because I didn't actually acquire the item, it's just a commitment. So there, that's where it looks like ribbis. But uh, we actually acquired it. So then Robert, everyone agrees that this is perfectly legitimate. So the Gemara says, well, obviously, of course, if I buy wheat, bring it home, it increases in value and I sell it at a future point in time or ask my friend who sold it to me to sell it. Of course, I get the benefits. What's wrong with that? Obviously, if I really acquire the item, of course, I can have this type of relationship where I buy it and then sell it at an increase in value. So Zemar says, I'll go to Yichel like Karen's office. Shmuel, okay. So Zemar says, no, no, no. What actually happened was that he didn't actually buy it. He, they agreed on a price. They agreed on a, on a contract. And he he moved it into a special corner to hold it, you know, for the boss. So again, so what happens here is the seller agrees to sell the brick, sell the, the commodity to the buyer. And, okay, so the buyer gives him the money today. But he will sell the, the buyer's item at a future point. He will sell the item at a future point for, for a higher value and give the change back to the buyer. Now, if he sets aside a special corner where he says this is the buyer stuff, then he's allowed to do this. Shmuel Amr, Shmuel says, This is the opinion of Rabbi Huda that says, that says one side of Rabbis is permitted. Let's explain what's one side of Rabbis. It's actually very, very simple. One side of Rabbis is Rabbis that may or may not happen. Give me a second. Okay, so how, does, how exactly does one side of Rabbis work? Very simple. I buy a field from, I buy a field from Eric. Okay. You know, actually, I'll take, I'll take a loan. I'll take a loan from Eric. Eric <laughs> wants collateral. So we agree that if, if I don't pay back the loan, then Eric can keep my house. Okay, fine. And we write up a contract. Now, so Eric says, look, you know, that this house, uh, right now it's mine. I bought the house, in, in, you know, for the loan. I'm going to live in the house or I'll, I'll uh, rent it out or something. I'll, I'll keep all the rent money. Okay, which is very nice, except what happens if I do pay back the money? If I, do, so if I don't pay back the loan, that's perfectly, Eric's behavior is perfectly legitimate. Uh, he's entitled to the money from the day that we wrote the contract. If he moves in and rents it out, there's nothing wrong with that. However, the concern is what happens if I do repay the loan? Then what happens? Turns out that, that Eric's stay in my house was itself ribbis. It was interest. In addition to getting back his loan money, he also got to stay in my house. Now, now, if this is something that may or may not happen. It depends on whether or not I repay the loan. This is called sadaq of the ribs, the possibility of ribs occurring. You know, one possibility of it happening. And Rabbi Huda says sadaq of the ribs is permitted. Okay, one second. Okay, now the similar story would be true in the case of this relationship. Okay, so for, again, I'm I'm the commodity trader, right? And uh, Eric. I think Eric, you're the commodity trader, right? So Eric, I'll, I'll sell the commodities. Eric is going to buy the commodity from me. He's going to buy a bushel of grain, and he's going to pay me $1,000. And he tells me that when the market increases in value and the bushel of grain is even worth $1,100, then I should give him back $1,100. So he increases money, right? So, we, mm -hmm. so until now, we said, well, maybe, he may, maybe Eric actually acquire the grain. Maybe Eric had a corner of my house where the bushel of grain was being stored. We learned the opinion of Rabbi Yaina that says that if I actually have the grain in my house, this is a permitted relationship, even if I, he doesn't actually acquire it. And now we get to Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says, well, one second. Who says the price of grain is going to go up? The grain won't go up. What if it goes down? The price of grain go up. What if it goes down? It goes down too. So, so exactly. So may not actually profit from this relationship. This is what's called Tzad Echa Beribis. He may benefit, he may not benefit, says Rabbi Huda, Tzad Echa Beribis is permitted. By the way, the story, the halach is not like Rabbi Huda. Okay, okay. Well, let, let's see. So what is Haman Rabbi Huda? I'm Tzad Echa Beribis Mutter. What is it? The tiny we learned. Harashay Noishe Bechavei Ramana. So I owed Eric $1,000 and I gave him my house for the $1,000 loan. 
Bizman Shamaka Rifle Paris Mutter. Okay, so the rabbis say I'm allowed to use the house. Eric is not allowed to use the house. Um, even Eric is allowed to use the house. And why? Because maybe this will come to Ribis, maybe not. It depends on whether I, whether or not I repay the loan. And Rabbi says a story on Rabbi Huda. Might say Rabbi Yisus ben Zunan. There was a, there was a person named Rabbi Yisus, the son of Zunan. She also the Mechara. I'll be Rabbi Loza ben Azariah. I'll carry her And uh, basically, the rabbis endorsed this arrangement, and and uh, the buyer was eating the fruit, meaning Eric would have been eating the would, would have been renting out my house. On Rabbi the rabbis said Mishan Raya. I'm going to carry her parents. I have a they said that you had the story wrong. It, it, it wasn't Eric that was eating the eating uh, renting out the house. It was me that was renting the house, renting out the house. So that they had he, they claimed that Rabbi Huda's story is, is is not not correct. Okay, one second. Okay, my benai. What's the debate here? Sabai explains. I'm Rabbi Yitzchak of Ribis Ika Benai. Abai explains the debate here is Ribis whether the possibility exists that might come to Ribis. Okay, there's another interpretation, however, of this debate. So again, according to this opinion of Rabbi, according to this understanding of Rabbi Hudo, so now we can understand the, the, the relationship between the commodity supplier and the commodity trader, right? The commodity trader may or may not make a profit, and anything that may or may not result in, in interest is not called Ribis. That's the opinion of Rabbi Huda. According to Abaya, like we explained. However, there are other understandings of what Rabbi Huda's opinion actually is. According to them, Rabbi Huda's opinion has nothing to do with what we spoke about at all. Now there's something else entirely. So Rav Amarov explains, Ribis Amanas It could be the debate here is that everyone agrees that if I pay back loan to Eric, Eric has to refund me all the rent money he got for the past couple of months. Everyone agrees that Tzadak of Ribis is prohibited because if the Ribis, if the interest actually happens, that would be prohibited. Okay, so why does Rebuta permit it? Because Rebuta says the, the, the buyer, meaning Eric, Eric is the, both the lender and in this case the buyer of my property, Eric would have to refund me the value of the rent for the past few months. The rabbis say don't collect the rent because he's concerned that he might not refund it and therefore it's going to be interest. Everybody says, no, you don't have to be concerned. He'll refund it, and then there, there won't be any interest. That's, that's the opinion of Rabbi Huda. Now that Rav... Now that Rav Yani explained that you can repay a loan with either commodities or the money itself, uh, Mali the man, Mali Hain, and Nami Amrino. First is also true. You can you you can also argue uh, um, why. In other words, if you can if you can repay the it, it you can repay a commodity in place of a loan in, in place of money. You can also and you can you can pay a commodity in place of money. You can also give money in place of a commodity. Meaning. Until now, we're talking about you owe you owe money. You're paying you're paying commodities. And now, what what can you do? You can you can you can do the opposite as well. Mali man, Mali hain at Nami Amrin. In a place can Okay, the idea is as follows. Let's say uh, you want to engage in a future futures contract. So Eric again is our commodity trader. Eric wants to buy wants to buy the bushel of grain in a, in a, in in uh, six months. From now. So, like we explained, let's make a little bit of a narrow, narrower timeline to make it more realistic for political times. So, typically a two month, three month lead time. Okay, so let's explain what's going on here. So, currently, we're now in, uh, I think it's uh, September time. The, the grain is usually ready. So, it's September time, and Eric wants a bushel of grain in December. The current rate of September prices, let's say, is $100 a bushel. So Eric says to me, I'm going to give you $100. I'd like the bushel, but I'd like it delivered in December. Now, I don't have a bushel of grain. So you might think, well, this might be a questionable relationship, but it's actually not, according to Rivianna. Why? Because I could take Eric's money right now and go straight to the market, buy the bushel of grain, put it in my warehouse for a few months, and keep it. So therefore, this is not a questionable relationship because in, in in place of the commodity, I can I can always take his money, convert it into commodity, which I'll deliver in, in three months. 
So therefore, this is permitted as well. As, as soon as the market sets a rate, I can accept an ob a futures obligation even if I don't have the commodity uh, it, presently. Okay, so Acer of Papa, Sir Papa, Acer, Papa, Funa Brother of Shua, the Ravos, Sir Papa, and Funa, the son of Shua, asked Ravo, Kulam, and Yeshla, and Moderma, and Leoser. One second, didn't we just learn, didn't we just learn that all these relationships are permitted only in the case of Yeshla, where you have the commodity? We'll, we'll just explain the resolution, then we'll, then we'll give a detail. Amr Lahu, so he explains to them, Hasim Alvo, Hachazmini. It's very important to understand. So that, let, 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 let's take a minute to explain this. We have we have ribis of halva and ribis of a sale. Let's explain. Ribis of halva. What is that? The, the 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 loaning of commodities is potential. Let's go backwards a step. Like we explained pre in, in, the, in, in the in the introduction share on Sunday, biblical ribis is only dera halva. It is only in a, the manner of a loan, and therefore rabbinically, the category of loaning commodities is far more stricter than the category of buying futures. Because one's a loan and one's a purchase. And therefore, we're stricter with regard to the laws of loans than we are with regard to the laws of, of purchases. Hence, in if I bar if I'm borrowing, if I'm loaning a commodity, then I can only loan it is only permitted to loan a commodity if the borrower already has some of that commodity. So theoretically he can pay me back immediately. The fact that he can take my money. The fact that he can take the, the commodity, sell it immediately, and repay me exactly the same value does not permit him to repay me the same exact commodity in, 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 in three months, which would have a different value. However, with regard to the laws of sales, i.e. future contracts, future contracts look like loans, but they're really sales, and therefore the rules are much more lenient. I am allowed to sign a future contract at current market prices, even if I don't have the commodity in my possession. And again, the reason here is because biblically speaking, it is impossible to have ribis through a sale, only through a loan. What? Okay. Now we are at um, about six lines down from the top of 63b. Rabbi Verbiye said to Amit Travail. Okay. Let's explain this. Rabbi Yisrael Sam Shabbai, my time I'm going to post now. Sharshim Shuk Al Fish Elam. Now, so we explain in future contracts, you can sign a future contract at current market at current market prices. As long as there's a market price, you don't need to have the commodity before agreeing to a future a futures contract. My my time. What's the reason? Um, so, I'm sorry. I'm relay shkila tivusak mashalya chizri. My honestly, have lizuzi biyadi have vezavne bihini ushilim. Basically, you can take your 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 favor and throw it on the thorn bushes. Meaning, you're not really doing me much of a favor in this case. If I could buy the item right now, and I agree to buy it in a future contract to deliver in 12 months, and, and we're, it's effectively the same price. So the the buyer says, "Look, you're not really doing me much of a favor. There's no real interest going on because I can go to to Healy and and uh, Hini and Chile, two local places, and make the purchase immediately today." So there's no favor being proffered here in advance of the money. Remember, the key word here is we're going to get to it. Uh, um, here we go. We'll get to it. We'll get to it either today or tomorrow. Kol agar notar is ribis. Agar notar. What is agar notar? It's like we explained before. Agar notar is, is payment for waiting, or payment for really the lack there, or payment for the lack of waiting, giving advance payments. But agar notar is prohibited. You can't you can't give a guy a lower payment because he doesn't have to wait for the money or charge him more for waiting. That's prohibited. But in the case of a future contract, there's no payment for waiting. I can go right now and get the, and get the same stuff immediately. So you, you think you're doing me a big favor? Shakti Tivusa, take your favor. Shadi Achizri, throw it on the thorn bushes. I don't really, you're not really helping me. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to have to tell me, I'm going to tell you, 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 I'm going to tell the same idea. Why can't I loan commodities? You think I can't go to, you think that the, the commodity is going to burn down in my house more than your house? Like, in other words, the commodity also, the same argument is true. I'm not, you're not doing me a favor by paying me 
commodities of a higher value, the same quantity, but more value at a later point in time, when today those commodities are, are I could sell them immediately and, 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 and get the money and pay you back exactly what you loaned me, same amount of value. So you're not either doing me any favor. So why is it different? Same difference. Same difference you mentioned before. We are far stricter with the laws of, sa- of, of loans than sales. And again, the reason is because ribis de raisa is only an loan. You cannot have ribis de raisa by a sale, in, a, including a future contract, which sort of looks like a little bit of a loan. It doesn't make a difference. And therefore, we're much more lenient with regard to the laws of sales, of future contracts, than we are with the laws of loans. So he points out something else, which is that there's a broker fee, meaning it, had you gone today and and bought and bought the wheat and then tried selling it again in December or keeping it until December, you have to pay some broker fees. So it could be that indeed he has to he has to reduce the price by the broker fee, meaning he's the the commodities the commodity supplier. Gets a, gets a small fee for serving as the broker. So therefore, there's no agonotor. There's no savings here for, for the future contract because, in other words, had you not engaged in the future contract and bought the stuff right now, you'd pay increased brokerage, brokerage fees. So that brokerage fee gets paid to the commodity supplier for supplying it to you in December, which, would, which results in a net equal, equal cost. So today, it would cost you $1,000, $995 plus the $5 broker fee. Because we know each other and I'm delivering it in December, so you save yourself the broker fee. So you pay me instead of 995, you pay me a thousand. So it's net, it's, it's basically net equal. There's no agar noter, there's no penalty for delivery, there's no, there's no, um, there's no discount for paying early, there's no penalty for paying late. Okay. And Ravashi Amar Zuzi de Inchi Inu Abdulay Safsi Russo. One second. Yeah, Ravashi basically says here because because uh, because uh, um, one second. Yeah, Ravashi argues that the it's the seller that pays that pays. This the seller pays the fee, not the buyer. So in this case, uh, is the, the the payment, the brokerage fee, or the carrot, whatever the fee is, is paid by the is paid by the seller, not the buyer. The buyer pays the same amount anyway. The, it's true that of course the seller say, the seller here is the one who's saving the money. That's fine. The buyer is paying an equal amount of money because the buyer doesn't pay the fee. Okay, six fifty. Let's continue. Robert and Yosef, I'm Robert and Yosef both say, "Hi, man, do you have Harif?" Okay, so here, so today, today in the modern markets, we have future contracts that go out, you know, years, years in advance. In in the Talmudical times, the future contracts basically were only once the, the, the this whole market of futures was only once a rough approximation of the yields were were known. So I guess if they planted a winter crop, which is, I think that's what they usually did, um, then they would only know sort of sometime uh, in early early spring summer. It sort of get a rough approximation of what the yields would be. Now, a guy here is trying to do a future contract in advance of the market, right? This is called Tarah Harifa, a, a, a sharp market, meaning it's it's still very young. So the buyer of the futures has to participate in the threshing of the grain that he bought. Tumor says exactly why. Lamai, what's the purpose of this? If it's for the acquisition, in other words, as a Kenyan, uh, standing on top of, threshing, of, of the grain being threshed is not a Kenyan. There's no such Kenyan. If it's to show that there's <laughs> a seriousness to the sale, meaning that now if the, if the seller tries to renege on the sale, the buyer has a right to, to, give him, to curse him, basically. Right? Remember, this is the curse of the one who, the God who punished the generation of the flood and the dispersion will punish all these people. That These are the people that give full seriousness to the sale and back out at the last minute. So if it's to establish this curse to prevent the guy from backing out, uh, one second, one second. The guy takes money 
and promises him the grain, he's already gotten the curse. Standing on top of the grain doesn't prove anything. So Gemara says, well, No, no, no. It is necessary to prove seriousness. And that at that, once, you're, once you watch the, you watch the threshing of the grain, so now it shows that the, the buyer here is very serious. Let's explain. People that bought, people that sell uh, early futures, they'll often sell to multiple people. In the, in England, the, the market terms, this is called rehypothetication. They, you go to the gold markets, every, go, every bar of gold could be sold multiple times. So he's, he's uh, hypothecating his, his grain multiple times. Why? Because he knows that people don't always come through with these types of transactions. So if he sees him coming to watch a thresh, so, so now he knows he's got a serious client, a serious buyer. He said, look, all you gave me was money. You haven't really acquired it yet. You can still change your mind. Therefore, I didn't take your, your bid seriously. Okay. So Ravashi says, look, now that you're telling me the concern here is that people typically don't, don't negotiate these early future contracts with mm-hmm. a lot of seriousness. Tobias says, well, if that's the case, then, in, then this is a general principle that we can apply. Ravashi is proposing is that second one second Ravashi, Ravashi is proposing because this is this is dependent on people sort of being serious if the guy establishes a seriousness even earlier in the marketplace he says like are you really serious about the guy says yeah no, no you're the only one then then indeed the, the deal is done and there's a Misha Para here if there's a curse if anyone changes their mind okay um yeah, and let's, see, let's start the next Gemara. Amr of Nachman. Nachman says, this is what we've mentioned five times so far. The general rule of Ribis is payment for waiting, adding adding to the price because you, because you waited for the money is prohibited. So Amr of Nachman. Rav Nachman's explained. Haiman de Yov Zuzil he, he gave money to buy a cucumber. It's like a gourd, not quite a cucumber, some sort of gourd, uh, squash type of vegetable. The Ka'azli Dala uh, the, 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 the price of these gourds were four for a dollar. Hey, hey. One second. Okay. Um, the, the, so the guy says, you know what? I'll give you five of them for a dollar. So he's giving you a 20% bonus. So it's Nugabe. If he has them to deliver, then he's allowed to. Less Nugabe also. If they're if they're not if he doesn't have them to supply, meaning he's basically telling the guy, "Look, you it? advance me the money. I'm giving you a better deal." So then it's prohibited because that's wait. That's called waiting for funds. Okay. I'm giving you a discount because you're paying earlier. So as it's cheated, that's obvious. Like he has a line of credit, so he's always able to get gourds because he has a line of credit. Okay, so let's explain. There's two ways. So the, let's say it like this. The gourds are four for a dollar. Okay, this guy is ready to say, look, I'll give you five for a dollar. You just have to realize I, I lost the key. I, the key is, is, is in a distant town. It's coming in by caravan. As soon as I get the key, I'll give it to you. So the guy says, well, fine. It's going to take a little bit. I, I, I want five for a dollar. That is permitted because he has the gourds. He just can't get to it. Because because uh, he doesn't have his key, or his his son is bring, his son is bring, is carrying the gourds in, so this is sort of paying for an inconvenience. He's not paying for the advancement of the money because the guy has the stuff ready. He's ready to seal the deal today. He just can't access the stuff. However, in the case where the guy has a line of credit, so he has to actually go collect the gourds on his line of credit to be able to hand it over to deliver it to the buyer. He's not allowed to offer him a discount for advancing him the money. Uh, for adva- for advancing him the money, that's called agonotor. That's called payment for payment for for this is actually a discount for early payment, and that is prohibitive. And uh, I could point out halachically speaking, early early pay, early bird discounts uh, it depends why you're doing it. If you're doing it because you need the money up front, then it, it's a serious halachic question. This has to be structured in a certain way halachically. 
If, however, you're offering the early bird discount because you want to nail down the commitments, right? You don't want to put your own investment in, except, you know, unless you know that people are actually interested in the product. So that's a different story. In that case, that that would be like, like uh, you know, waiting for your kid to get the key or something like that, where it would be permitted. Okay, have a great day. Rabbi, I, I made a mistake with my flight. My flight is actually leaving early morning uh, tomorrow. So I'll be on the way to the airport uh, at at uh, right right now. So Rabbi Graham will be leading in person tomorrow, and I will be meeting you in person on Friday, Mr. Shem. A little bit of a change of the schedule. So tomorrow, so from here on, it's in person. And I'll be back. Okay. Safe Friday. travels. Safe travels. Thank you. Happy to have Thank you, you again. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I hope you had a, I hope